Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Music Theory. I love theory, and I know a lot of you don't. I will try to explain in 5 minutes why these songs sound so great, revealing the inner workings of the music with only as much theory as is absolutely necessary. Do watch this video if you want to know how the top producers make the music. Don't watch this video if you want to know about music production, beats, or using music software. Want to write music yourself? Just interested? This video's for you. Doesn't matter what music software you use, music theory is all the same. Today, we're breaking down Kygo Stole the Show featuring Parson James. Now, two things are generally happening in any song. We are, of course, talking about harmony and melody. Harmony, or notes you hear played together, like a piano or a guitar might do. Melody generally means notes you hear one after another like a male or female vocal. In this case, we have a male vocal singing the melody and synthesizers providing the harmony by playing the chords. You only need to know this. All the chords and the entire melody, all the different sections, are using the same half a dozen musical notes. It's so easy, anyone can do it. Okay, so the first section has three chords. Doesn't matter what they're called, it matters what they sound like. The first one is darker than the next two. Any set of notes you use in a song can be put together to produce a series of chords. And there'll be a selection of both light and dark ones to choose from. It's a good idea to structure your songs so that you don't play your best set of chords first. You want to save that for the chorus. Now look at the melody notes. Same notes as are in the chords. Again, don't go crazy, don't want to use your A-game melody until the chorus. The main note in the melody, G sharp is also the most important note in the first chord. Not a coincidence. Okay, so the second section. We're taking everything up a notch. We've got a sense we're heading towards the chorus. There are four chords now, with one added at the end, otherwise all the same. The important notes in the melody are the same ones from the last section. Other notes just help embellish the important ones. If everyone used only melody notes that appeared in the chords accompanying them, then music would be... Section 3 does something that I haven't seen in any other EDM analysis I've done so far. It changes the notes it uses to make the melody in the chords. Well, someone had to do it, didn't they? The melody is broken up into four parts here. Each part has a note that is more important than the others, and they're not all the same. Part 1, D sharp, part 2 and 3, C sharp, and part 4, G sharp. Heard these notes before, haven't we? Part 4. This chorus section is set up with exactly the same chords as section 3. The difference here is that the melody is super simple, always orbiting and gravitating towards the note B. The rhythm of the melody is what provides the bit of spiciness here and excitement, not the notes. And that's an important distinction to make as well. It's not actually all about the melody and the chords. Thanks for watching, but mostly thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this short theory video and want to learn more, then subscribe and sign up for my mailing list and receive some free PDF theory exercise material, plus the MIDI transcription from this class. There is also a longer, more in-depth version of this video available to those who sign up. Want more EDM music breakdowns? You can check out my Skillshare classes where I discuss how the music works in EDM.